But it is, it is also true that um, at the present time, when capitalism is in such a mess, and you know the economies are, are collapsing everywhere, uh, that e even in the sort of traditional imperialist countries, never mind countries like Poland, there's a real threat of working class uprising. I mean, not immediately, not tomorrow, but but the fact is that uh, bad conditions getting worse every day and every week, more and more unemployment, less and less health care and, and support and provision. You know, the chain, something's got to snap at some point and, and uh, the working class must regroup itself and must uh, restore uh, socialism in countries like Poland. And I think it's especially in countries which have, which have experienced socialism where they're most worried that people will say, look, we've had enough of this capitalism lot, we thought it was going to be okay, but it's not, let's get back to where we were. And, you know, this propaganda is therefore very, very important in those countries to try and persuade people, well, no, no, you know, you really don't like that, that sort of thing, it would be the Russians coming back and taking over or whatever. I know a German comrade who is from the former GDR, and he lives in Berlin, and he said, you know, our populations, or bought with a bunch of bananas, <laughs> you know, because we had everything, you know, free childcare, free health, free education, accommodation, you know, we were not homeless or, or something. But because of the way the capitalist economy works, and we could not always afford to have hard currency to buy certain things which are taken for granted in Western Europe, like bananas, or chocolate or something, yeah. and the population was constantly bombarded, this government cannot even give you bananas, and. To, yeah. And so th when the counter-revolutions took place, I mean, the Americans were s agents were standing in the middle of Prague with truckloads of banana and giving free bananas away to people. <laughs> and of course, it's a very cheap thing to give. I mean, if, if you were giving presents to you near and dear at Christmas and giving bananas, they'd quite rightly say, why the hell are you treating us with contempt to these populations? But treating, tre treated with contempt in return for bananas, their wholesale privatization at uh, for a song to Western corporations has, 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 has ta taken place. And the people of these countries are beginning to learn, we've been hoodwinked, we've been defrauded. They can see what was there 20 years ago and they can compare it with now. At one time, youngsters of all the people liked the freedom to travel. Freedom to travel is a wonderful thing if you've got the wherewithal to travel. Travel doesn't come, up, come free. And so what this travel has come down to is all the young people who have no jobs in their countries of origin are to be found in labor markets, which are like cattle markets. You stand up there in the, in the morning and various cowboys are coming to pick you up and say, that looks strong enough to go. And somebody was sent to, um, I, I employed some, somebody to, to, to cure my garden. It, it, it's a long history. I, I won't bore you with it. But anyway, it required, and he, of course, employs, he's a small man himself, employs a Romanian young man. The employer is reactionary, so in front of the employer, I said to the young man who's a Romanian, I said, do you like Romania now or under Ceausescu? He said, under Ceausescu. I said, why? He said, we had everything then. We have absolutely nothing. You can see what I'm doing, he said, here. You know, so that is the freedom that it comes to. There are people who are, were engineers, doctors, got doctorates in various subjects, and they're doing cleaning for middle-class housewives in this country now, and in Western Europe. These countries provide the bulk of prostitutes in the big red-light districts in Western Europe. More than that, in Delhi, in Bombay. No wonder they hated Stalin. It wouldn't have happened those days. It happens now. So they got all the freedoms. You know, and that means the right to be exploited, the right to be a prostitute, the right to have no education, no health care, no schooling, etc. And that's what's happening. And I think the people are beginning to learn. And that's why in, on any big demonstration in, in the former Soviet Union, there are lots of people carrying pictures of Stalin, more than that of Lenin. Not because they think he's higher than, than Lenin. It's just he has been so maligned. And because all their really good material achievements, just it happened to be a matter of fact, took place during the time of Stalin. Lenin died in 1924, January 24. And, you know, the, the, this, 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 this hap, hap, happened then. And so they, they can see they've been defrauded.
And the, and the, and the good thing is that if quantity has, re, has reached quality and is t actually is turned into, in, into its opposite, so much rubbish is spoken, people have actually stopped believing, believing that. Stalin is a very popular person in uh, the, uh, in the former uh, Soviet territories. He was always popular in the third world. There was never a problem. He's never stopped being popular in, 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 in the former Soviet Union. And I think even Western populations, seeing what is happening around the world, can actually see what is happening. I, I, I think anti-Stalinism doesn't work so well these days. It doesn't fly very much, if, if, if I may use the different meta metaphor. Uh, so I think insignificant and small though we are, we actually performing a very, very useful function. We produce a lot of material, and some of the members of Stalin society may not read our material, but it's definitely read by the intelligence services and by our enemies. And every now and then, they come out of the woodwork and come and, come and interview me or interview somebody else from Stalin society. How come you knew about us? We, we, we thought we didn't even exist. And they say, we're very surprising there is such a thing as Stalin society. I said, why, why would you be surprised? After all, Stalin was a hero for a very long time in Western Europe during the wartime. His picture was regularly on television screens. And, and Churchill said in Parliament, I hope nothing happens to Stalin because I do not know there's any other person who can bring the Soviet people into wartime alliance with us the way Stalin, Stalin can. So um, those were the days when they even Hollywood produced films like Mission to Moscow mm -hmm. or the film on Stalingrad. This is not produced by Soviet Union, it's produced by by, by Hollywood. So we should make use of this material on a more regular basis.